Welcome back. My name is Executor and today we are going to do part two of our PFSense tutorial that we started last time. So if you haven't seen that part yet, I suggest you just scroll down through my videos and uh, check it out so you can uh, be able to keep up in this tutorial. So we're pretty much just going to be setting up uh, the firewall rules and um, and keep this video short and sweet because uh, our previous the previous one lasted uh, an hour and almost 30 minutes so I'm gonna try to keep this one really short and simple and all and that's just only gonna be focused on uh, the firewalls and that's it without further ado let's get started so let's see uh, I have a picture here that I'm gonna show you guys this is pretty much what we are going to do. So we're going to be um, blocking some services and um, add, you know, allowing services and all that good jazz. And uh, let's see. First, if you remember from our previous video, this is where we stopped. We were able to set this one up and uh, customize this uh, dashboard add it you know adding all these uh, adding all these uh, these um, these traffic graphs over here and all that good stuff and um, let me go ahead and bring my virtual machine back up so as you can see uh, pfsense is running and uh, Instead of using Raspberry uh, Raspberry Pi desktop, we are going to just uh, use Kali over here since it's already on. I'm gonna log in. So, first, let's check. Uh, let's see the network car. The network adapter Kali is uh, is connected to, and if you see, Kali is on the LAN uh, the LAN network that we set up last time. So, if you are new, if you're just joining us today, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you the adapters that we that we added on uh, on VMware for the purpose of this uh, tutorial over here. So as you can see, last video we uh, configured LAN and LAN 2 and the DMZ. And these are the different IP addresses for each network adapter. So Kali is currently connected to the LAN network right here, the LAN network. So that means I'm gonna do if if I type uh, a command for IP address, you're gonna see that uh, Ethernet one is connected to the ten network, so that's the LAN network, and uh, and that means we have internet. We can actually ping. Uh, sorry, we can ping uh, Google. Uh, Google.com. And that works, but let's choose uh, LAN 2 and see if we're going to have internet connection. So we're going to go back to Kali, and we're going we're gonna to go ahead and choose LAN 2, because we have to, we're going to go, we're going to go on the, the web configurator and set these one, you know, set uh, the firewall rules to allow these to have access to internet. But let's just test it out first, just so you guys understand. So Kali over here is going to see if you're looking at right here, it's going to try to refresh because it just lost internet connection because we swapped from LAN to LAN 2. And it's going to spin like that forever and not find, you know, any internet connection because um, we did not set the firewall rules that will allow uh, 
that will allow this. We didn't even set up a, a DHCP server on the network so that Kali can get an IP address. That's why if we try, um, if we try uh, that previous command again for IP address to check out our IP address, you're gonna see we have nothing. We have nothing here because uh, the firewall, first of all, the network is not allowing DHCP, so no host can get an IP address from it. But also, uh, the firewall rules wouldn't even allow it because there are, you know, there are none. So let's go back and uh, set all that up. Okay, so these these are the two that we're gonna be working today. We're gonna be setting rules for this for LAN two and DMZ. So. First things first, we're gonna, and by the way, just as a reminder, we are currently you know, following the guide, guidance of uh, VMware Advisor, and I'm gonna leave a link again to his video. If you want, you can check it out. He provided really, really good explanations, and uh, that's why I was so impressed that I decided to just share it with you guys so that together we can learn. So what we're gonna do is services, and uh, GCP server so that we can uh, we can get that rolling. And uh, if you see over here on the LAN system, the LAN network, we have DHCP enabled. We did this through the terminal when we were uh, configuring um, PFSense. And uh, if you see, LAN2 has nothing and DMZ has nothing. So and that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna follow uh, simple instructions. And that consists of just checking this to enable DHCP server on LAN to interface. And then we're just gonna go ahead and select the range. So the range we want is um, what? So let's, uh, and this is LAN two. Let me just double check and make sure, yes, on the dot three network. So we're gonna do from, uh, 192.168.3.10 to 192.168.3.200. That way, so any address within this range can be issued to any host that connects to the network. And uh, most of the time, it's gonna start with uh, the first available, which is gonna be uh, 192.168.3.11, like the, the first device that will be connecting to this will probably get an 11 and then and so on. That's how it usually works. Oh, you know what? I'm supposed to be putting that over here. I did so much talking that I almost forgot. So yes, this is, this is it. This is the limit for that range. And then uh, we just go scroll down and hit save. IP address must be specified from range for range. Okay, that means I made a mistake. Uh, made a mistake over here somewhere. From dot three. Three dot six. One and two dot one six eight dot three dot two hundred. Hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see. What did I miss? We don't need to worry about all these, all these, I guess, extra stuff that uh, are not required for the purpose of, uh, of this video. So, went wrong other option gateway but that's uh, all these are optional subnet so we said allow ignore deny clients we leave that as is subnet mask is correct 
this is the available range and we decided to do it dot from dot 10 to dot 200 which is fine and we don't have an additional pool we don't need to worry about all that we're not going to worry about wind surveys and all that because we're going to be using the the default ones the gateway we can add a gateway but I don't know if uh, that will make a difference let's try hitting save again and it says and you know what it's easy let's just uh, see what we have done here and just follow those steps we did from that 10 to that 240 And that's it. Uh, ah, two fifty shot two fifty six. I don't think this has something to do with uh, with why uh, land two is not working. But let's uh, let's find out. Let's go back to land two, enable. One nine two the one six eight that three that ten to one nine two the one six eight that three the two hundred and that's the default. A valid IP address for ah. Oh. I mean, that means I made a mistake somewhere over here on the IP addresses. One nine two the one six eight three the yep because we're on the dot three network. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, that should be uh and there we go. I don't know why, but uh maybe I had a space in between, maybe. But anyway, that DHCP is now enabled and uh we're gonna move to the DMZ and do the same thing. Enable DHCP. So we're going to try to not make that same mistake here. Uh, that six and uh, you know what? Let's go to that 10. Start at 10 and finish at 200 as well. Uh, yeah, for this, we're just going to go with, um, we're going to give it a big range just because it's a DMZ and, uh, you know, and because why not? So we're going to do. 172, the 16, the 255, the 200 is the limit. So any range between, uh, I mean, any IP address within this range will be uh, issued to host once they connect to that network. And uh, assuming we did not make, a, I did not make any mistake typing uh, the IP addresses, this should also just save fine. And it is. So... What I'm gonna do is just go back again and try uh, connecting Kali Linux, just so you guys can see how it will work this time. This is Kali right here. And remember, we tried connecting uh, to line two before and it, it wasn't able to. It was just spinning. Did not get an IP address. We're gonna try it again and see if this time it will. So, and uh, we still have it at, let me see, IP address. And look at that. It automatically received an IP address from the dot three network, which is LAN two. Because we enabled DHCP. That's why uh, this host here, this is why Kali was able to receive an IP address. We're gonna go ahead and try uh, the DMZ as well to test that before moving on. 
So we're gonna go from LAN2 to DMZ and we should have an IP address starting from uh, 172. So we're gonna wait, this is gonna turn off, the icon here is gonna go and then it's gonna circle, it's gonna come back. So that means it already received an IP address. So we're gonna go ahead and run that same command and here it is, here it is. We have a, we're now connected uh, to the DMZ. Cool. So we're done with DSCP, you know, with enabling DSCP services for these networks. Now let's move on to uh, set up the firewall rules. So for that, we're just gonna hit firewall, go to rules, and um, as you can see, the WAN has a default rules over here, and this is all we need. We don't need to do any changes in there, and uh, we also have these rules over here, the anti-lock uh, anti -lock, lockout rule. All these rules are default, so this is what allows you know allows us to you know reach the internet and um, be able to use this GUI to get access to this GUI. You enable, you, you mean you disable this one, you might have to just reinstall a fresh, uh, a fresh version of, uh, of PFSense. So you want to leave these as is. And what we're going to do is uh, set up rules for uh, LAN2 and DMZ. And uh, as you can see, there are, none, there are none over here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and copy, uh, copy this one right here, this rule. And all we have to do is, uh, it's a pass. All we have to do is just change uh, the interface. And what else? Let me see. Uh, protocol is going to be any. And uh, source. Source is going to be from LAN 2 net. LAN 2 net. And uh, ports is going to be any. So this is it, that's it. So we're just gonna go, and this is gonna be uh, allow internet access to LAN 2. We're gonna do that, specify that, and that's hit save. And every time you save, you make a change, you have to hit apply for the changes to take effect. Always remember that. And uh, let me see, according to the instructions over here, so we already have that rule down, allowing internet access to LAN 2. So we're going to go ahead and add uh, two deny rules to this uh, interface. Two deny rules. And uh, the first one is going to be blocking uh, LAN, the LAN network to LAN to network. So let's go ahead and add that. And rules. You have to remember, rules go top down. Rules go top down. Always remember that. So we're going to go ahead and add this rule over here. And it's going to be a... It's going to be a block. And destiny... No, interface is going to be LAN 2. And protocol is going to remain... Protocol is going to be any. Interface LAN 2, protocol any. Source is going to be any as well. Source, we're going to leave it at any. And destination is going to be a LAN, LAN network. So we're preventing them from being able to communicate. And then we're going to go ahead and just uh, put a description over here. Block LAN 2 from LAN. And um, we're going to go ahead and just add the second block rule. That's going to be a block. And it's gonna be, uh, interface is going to be uh, LAN 2. Protocol is going to be any. Source is going to be any. And destination is going to be... Uh, DMZ. We're going to block it from the DMZ as well. DMZ net, yes. And go ahead and just uh, 
c'est block uh, LAN 2 from DMZ. We're preventing them from uh, being able to communicate whatsoever. And uh, according to the instructions uh, from VMware Advisor, these are all the rules that we, we just had to set for this network over here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply changes. Then we're going to move on to DMZ and uh, that will be it. So DMZ, we're going to have quite a few rules that we have to, that we have to uh, create. And let me see. Instruction says, okay, first we're going to allow a ping for DMZ. So we're going to create a pass rule. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. First is a pass. It's going to be pass. Interface is going to be DMZ and source protocol. Protocol is going to be uh, ICMP. We're going to allow ping. Yeah, allow ping. So pro ICMP over there. And source is going to be DMZ, uh, DMZ net. And destination is going to be any. And we're going to allow, uh, allow Allow ICMP. Allow ICMP from DMZ. And just go ahead and um, hit save. And let me just double check, uh, make sure that we have this one down correctly. Ping DMZ, yep. Okay, second rule is going to be uh, NTP. NTP, and that's going to be a pass as well. So let me see, pass. Hello, NTP. Action is pass, interface is DMZ, yep. And uh, protocol is going to be TCP. Yep, we leave it leave it as is. And uh, so the protocol is going to be UDP. Protocol is going to be UDP. UDP. Right there. And for source, we're going to go with DMZ uh, DMZ net. Source DMZ net destination is going to remain any. And port is going to be destination port. We're just going to go ahead and just uh, type uh, the port number for, uh, for NTP, network time protocol. This is uh, 123. And uh, this one will be NTP port. Allow NTP. Oh my God. For some reason I can't type today. No, NTP. NTP port. Hit save. The next rule is going to be uh, allowing HTTPS for DMZ. So we're going to just go ahead and add uh, HTTPS. So interface is going to remain DMZ. And protocol is going to remain TCP right here. Source is going to be DMZ, DMZ net. And uh, destination is going to remain any. Destination is going to remain any. And port is going to be, uh, as we all know, uh, it's going to be uh, HTTPS. And this is um, allow
HTTPS access. Okay. The next one is going to be uh, HTTP. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add HTTP and that will be uh, interface DMZ. Uh, source is going to remain the DMZ network. DMZ network. And uh, destination is going to remain any and port. We're just going to go ahead and select port 80 for HTTP and just go ahead and uh, Hit allow, allow HTTP access. And next allow is going to be uh, DNS. So interface is going to remain DMZ. Protocol is going to be UDP. Source is going to be a DMZ network. Destination any and port uh, is going to be uh, 37. 53, my bad. 53, 53. Always distracted. DNS is 53, always. And then uh, we're just going to label this. Allow DNS access you can be more descri uh, descriptive uh, on uh, you know on the descriptions especially if you're working in a, you know in a corporate environment you want to be uh, really uh, uh, specific here just uh, so that everybody you know everybody that you know have admin access to this uh, environment here can understand or for yourself you know if you read it you look at the rules a few months later that you can still uh, remember what rule allows what or prevents what so the next ones are going to be uh, block rules. We're going to start with the block rules. Let me see. So first we're going to block HTTP from, you know, for D, uh, DMZ. Add it uh, all the way on top. It's going to be block. And um, Interface is going to be DMZ and TCP is going to, I mean, the protocol is going to remain TCP. And source is going to be, uh, as usual, uh, DMZ net. And um, destination is going to be this firewall. Uh, destination, this firewall. Because we want to prevent the DMZ for, prevent the DMZ from uh, accessing this uh, this uh, this firewall like this uh, environment because if you allow it and uh, the DMZ is already in an uh, in a, in, a, in, a, in a zone that is not that secure so if somebody hack into it that means they will also gain access to your firewall because you allow the DMZ network to have access to the firewall that's why uh, we are preventing that from happening and uh, let me see So we're gonna block it, and the port's going to be uh, port 80. Uh, no, 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 no. Block HTTP. I mean, in the instructions, uh, VMware advisor put port as a 43. So that means we're actually blocking. Um, HTTPS. So, ch -ch 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 -ch. so we can go ahead and uh, and select uh, the port four four three for HTTPS. And if we want, we can add another rule blocking uh, blocking port eighty as well. So in this rule is block HTTP uh, from DMZ. Block HTTPS from DMZ. And we're going to save. 
and the next block rule is going to be uh, blocking the communication between LAN 2 to DMZ. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Action is going to be block. And uh, interface is going to be DMZ. Protocol is going to remain uh, any. And source is going to be uh, the DMZ net. Destination is going to be LAN 2 net, LAN 2 network. And source, uh, source DMZ net, destination LAN 2, yep. And we're blocking uh, blocking LAN 2 from DMZ. Save that. The next block rule is going to be block LAN for DMZ. Action is going to be block. And uh, interface is going to be DMZ. Uh, protocol is going to be any. Protocol is going to be any. And um, source is going to be uh, DMZ net. And destination is going to be LAN network. LAN network. LAN network. So, and then uh, we're going to put this block LAN from DMZ. And then we're going to hit uh, save. And that's it. These are all the rules that we uh, we had to create for, D for the DMZ network. So, I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply change to apply change and uh, We can actually just add uh, the separators so that it looks like uh, what I showed you guys in the pictures. So first, we're gonna start with the red uh, red color and call the blocked blocked service uh, blocked services ports. We're gonna drag that all the way up. And then we're gonna add another separator, which is gonna be, uh, that's gonna be a green color for uh, a loud service port. A loud services port. And that, we're gonna add that all the way over here. And if we want, we can uh, leave it like this, or we can even go further. Let me uh, let me check uh, check something real quick. Uh, in the pictures. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna also add a third one to specify uh, internet access. And we're gonna keep that blue. Call that internet, internet access. That's just to go crazy, uh, just to go crazy with the separator because I actually like this feature. It's really, uh, really nice. And uh, the internet service, let me see. That's gonna be, uh, gonna drag that all the way uh, you know what let's come back to that one let's come back to that one first I need to allow HTTPS HTTP so HTTP and HTTPS, what we're going to do, we're going to drag this over here and uh, oh, you know what, yes, we're going to just uh, drag this over here, bring this here, remove this over here and uh, add HTTPS here, 
Yes. So we have HTTP port 80 and port uh, 44. You know, what? I should also just go back and um, add those ports over there just so it's uh, it's clear. As your mate cannot be saved. Never mind. Let me just save this one first. Apply changes. And uh, come back. Let's start with. Uh, Start with this one and uh, we're gonna have to specify uh, port 80 over here and uh, let's hit cha apply changes and see We're going to do the same for HTTPS. Dun, dun, dun. You know what? 443 is where are you? Right here. And uh, hit apply change. My bad. I was so distracted. I didn't even. I wasn't even paying attention to. To how I was selecting these uh, these ports. My bad. And uh, this one is for uh, DNS. We're gonna do that too, so that all the ports are visible. Yeah, you have to. You have to always uh, DNS fifty three. You have to always specify these ports every time you create a rule. It's very important because you wanna. You want the rule. You want the rule. You want the rule to be specific to a given port, because a port is like an entry to your network. So, and this one is um, this is any any. So we don't have to worry about that. And over here we're blocking. Uh, let's add uh, this port. Can't believe I wasn't even. Oh my bad. Can't believe I wasn't even noticing all this. And as I said, we can also add a uh, port 80 in there. Port 80. Okay, let me see. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is fine. This is any any. Yeah, if you are allowing or blocking a specific port, you have to specify the port. This is NTP. So NTP is 123. Uh, NTP NTP 123 NTP. Yes, right here. So, and allow NTP, we're allowing uh, any over here, so that's good. Now you have the port numbers right here. And if you want, you can add, uh, I mean, depending on the purpose of uh, your firewall, you might have more, even more rules over here. And you can always use separators like this to just, uh, just you know, divide it and have it, have it look nice. Have it look nice like that. So we're going to go ahead and just hit apply changes. And that's it. Now, uh, if we were to go back and use Kali Linux, you will see that it will be blocking, uh, like all these block, all these rules here will, uh, you know, will be applied. And I really wouldn't want this video to take, um, to take long like the previous one, because my plan is to just keep it short and sweet tonight. Just, uh, showing you guys uh, how to create firewall rules. If uh, I was too fast or uh, if you have any comment, suggestion, leave them uh, below and I will definitely uh, be getting back to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this, uh, this phase two of, uh, of our PFSense uh, firewall. Already, that will be it for this uh, for this video over here. Um, it was just um, about setting uh, firewall rules on PFSense. I was a little distracted and uh, all that good stuff. But uh, if you're following along, I hope you didn't have any issue. And um, 
please uh, subscribe to my channel to stay up, you know, updated and you know, stay notified every time uh, I uh, publish a new video. And um, I will see you guys in my next video.